Hello Vinyl Community! So uh, another video about my uh, listening habits and um, today I have uh, some records but uh, for change actually a lot of interesting CDs. Um, there is always uh, interesting stuff that you can get only on CD that has never been released on vinyl and in some cases probably never will. Um, it's mostly it's music from late 90s probably or the first zero years and um, yeah let's get on with it. Um, I've been listening uh, yesterday to Future Shop by Herbie Hancock. Um, of course a wonderful album that I have known for a very long time particularly because uh, this has been released basically at the same time when I as a young boy have started uh, listening to music at all and um, at that time uh, Rocket just came out and uh, it was of course a big hit around the world so everybody has seen uh, this uh, insane Rocket video. But little did I know that uh, uh, basically the whole band on this record uh, is material, um, a band or group that in the later years I would kind of uh, learn to like and appreciate a lot. So uh, this is another another subversive uh, Bill Laswell and uh, Michael Beinhorn uh, production to a certain extent uh, and uh, really a true uh, sort of a non-canonical material album if you want to look at it that way. Why not? Uh, certainly a great uh, great uh, and unique uh, record in, uh, in, uh, in the library of 80s music. Uh, very very seminal album. And uh, of course what made the album so special back in the day is of course that uh, musically it uh, derives so much from, uh, from hip-hop music which was still somewhat a new and uh, surprising uh, musical phenomena in the early 80s. And uh, so you have, you have DST uh, scratching here and uh, Sly Dunbar is of course playing drums here. So um, it's, but it's not only a hip-hop album, there is a lot of funk, uh, funk and jazzy moments here and some great singing also. So um, all in all, wonderful record, uh, Future Shop by Herbie Hancock. Um, then I've been listening to three records by Vangelis. Um, I have actually a lot of albums by Vangelis and that doesn't change the fact that uh, even though I really love Vangelis' music, sometimes it's a bit of a checkered experience for me, simply because some, some of his tunes, I find them sometimes slightly too, too much on the cheesy side, but uh, all in all, he's always fascinating for me. So this is uh, his album Antarctica. Uh, a uh, soundtrack uh, to a Japanese, uh, I think a documentary movie. Um, so uh, this came out in 1983 on Polydor. And uh, um, really uh, the, the right kind of record to listen while there are 40 degrees Celsius outside. <laughs> and, and, the, and the tar is melting on the streets. So I've been listening to Antarctica by uh, Vangelis. And um, See You Later is another album by Vangelis that kind of came out um, shortly before he started to work uh, on, uh, on Blade Runner, I think. Um, I even believe that probably this is the album that uh, kind of um, uh, Ridley Scott probably gave the idea to contact Vangelis for making the Blade Runner soundtrack. I think this is what inspired him. I find this, this is a very interesting album. I like the fact that uh, Vangelis is sort of uh, not only kind of um, spherically meandering through his keyboards here, but kind of constructing interesting uh, songs and uh, a lot of uh, rather ironic ideas come together here. And um, yeah, it's a brilliant, brilliant record and not boring for a second, you know? So uh, certainly also one of my favorite Vangelis records. I would say so. Um, at least for a while this was certainly my favorite Vangelis album, but one day it probably got replaced by his early work called Earth. Uh, I think Earth is really a uh, 
big masterpiece and uh, brilliant, very inspired record. Great fun to listen to it. This is uh, a remastered uh, re-release uh, that uh, came out two years ago um, on Vertigo. And uh, so this comes with uh, with an uh, additional inner sleeve, um, but um, um, that's actually how the original print, the original record looked like uh, compared with the, with the re-release design. Yeah, so this is a wonderful, wonderful record and uh, I would even claim that it's maybe uh, his best. So I don't know if you agree with me, but um, yeah, for me this is certainly one of my favorite Vangelis records he has ever created. Yeah, and so far the vinyl records. The rest of the day I have been listening to CDs only. Imagine that. And uh, to continue my exploration of the Fripp and Eno collaboration, this is uh, Beyond Even. This is another um, album that uh, Robert Fripp and Brian Eno made. This is more like a, well, it's almost like a compilation or it's, it's certainly a uh, selection of uh, tracks uh, they did together over over a longer period of time. Musically it's very much different than their ambient or proto-ambient records they did in the past. Um, actually the sound, for me, the sound feels much closer to uh, The Drop, which is another Brian Eno record. It's actually one of those few Brian Eno records that are not particularly popular. Um, and uh, but I felt that uh, this Beyond Even by Fripp and Eno that uh, it kind of operates um, in the same vein somehow uh, as far as sound and musical ideas go. Uh, in part it's a bit of a gloomy record. Uh, it's all kind of instrumentals and it's all very dark. It's like a soundtrack to a very dark movie, some science fiction movie maybe. Um, and uh, the last track uh, called Cross Crisis in Lost Storm, what a name, uh, features uh, Trey Gunn and uh, I will talk about him very soon because uh, the other two CDs that I still have here, they're kind of from the same musical environment, uh, sort of on the fringes of this uh, giant uh, musical monster called King Crimson and um, so this album here is by Bill Bruford and Tony Levin called Upper Extremities and this came out in 1998 and uh, yeah it's featuring David Torn on guitar and Chris Botti on trumpet so it's already a very original uh, interesting lineup and uh, it's a very demonic album. I mean, alone, if it's it's very dark, it's very gloomy. Yes, in parts, very powerful. Of course, uh, well, all the all kind of drama derives from very odd meters, as you would expect on a Bill Bruford record. The first track called uh, Cerulean or Carulean Sea. Um, it's kind of a two chord, uh, two chord uh, atmospheric. Uh, track that distantly reminds me of Dead Can Dance somehow. It's a very powerful record. It's very uh, intense music but in parts very very slightly jazzy one could say but always in a very in a very uh, sad and dramatic mood. Um, there are all kind of eerie trumpet themes by Chris Botti here. So um, yeah brilliant record. Fascinating instrumental album. Um, uh, I love to explore this kind of music and listen to it again and again. Of course you have all kind of uh, heavy duty uh, uh, musical statements here by Tony Levin play, playing his famous Chapman stick. So um, um, it's certainly not a soft album. It's very powerful and very reminiscent of the music that King Crimson has been doing by that time in those years. Sort of stuff like track. So yeah, good record. Um, interestingly, the other album I want to show you uh, that came out in 2003 uh, kind of uh, is based on the same musical premise, <laughs> just from uh, 
to other people that has been playing in King Crimson at the same time. It's an album, it's an album called To You by Trey Gunn and Pat Mastalotto. And uh, so here you have Trey Gunn playing his famous uh, VAR guitar and uh, all kind of uh, odd meters uh, that uh, uh, Pat Mastalotto puts together and it's all very intriguing and it's a very sort of a heavy prog album and I find it interesting that it's kind of a a very similar similar uh, instrumental concept uh, to this album because again it's a drummer and a bass player of King Crimson um, doing an album together and uh, funnily enough they have all four of them have been playing in King Crimson at the same time uh, in those years uh, during this uh, so-called double trio lineup so uh, this is a very it's it's as an album, it's a little more, um, it's heavier than the Bill Bruford um, Tony Levin album. It's, uh, in parts, it's almost sort of a noisy and industrial album, and uh, it's certainly not for the faint-hearted. Uh, so it's kind of a heavy, heavy prog rock, I would say. Um, yeah, these guys don't do much, sort of a 4-4 four, four, uh, meter. Uh, there is all kind of complex stuff going on. Uh, if you want to try to figure out how this record sounds, I could recommend you a track like uh, Absinthe and a Cracker, the second track on this album. This gives you kind of an idea how this this uh, album feels. Um, there are also kind of a, all kind of a sort of glitch elements and um, all this stuff. Yeah, so this is an interesting record too. Again, a uh, fascinating uh, journey to discover uh, this kind of music and uh, that's something I really enjoy doing. So yeah, so that's uh, Trey Gunn and Pat Mastellotto, TU, from 2003. Um, I think you can still get this CDs for uh, some very reasonable price over Discogs or somewhere else, I guess. But if you if you are sort of a collector of uh, interesting progressive rock music, then uh, you might just like both of them. Both of them. So uh, that's it for now. Um, that's what I've been listening to. And uh, so have a nice day and uh, see you again. <laughs>